Live from Bompton, oh, I mean Compton, California. Put your hands together for the ball smack, top, soar. Whoa, a lot of love. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, you're too kind, you're too kind. Fuck with the ball smack, top, soar. Look. The game is always deep. Hit the subscribe button, like this joint right now. Gather all your motherfucking homies and peep motherfucking game. observations and whatnot and i'm gonna put some bible game out there for niggas a little bit of bible game for y'all motherfuckers you understand me so let's get down oh man i'm feeling good like you know i should we are in the afterglow of Super Bowl 54. It was a beautiful situation. I really love the game, Super Bowl 54. But anyway, our show is brought to you by Ball Smack Streetwear. Go to Ball Smack Streetwear, cop some Ball Smack Streetwear. You understand me? Cop some Ball Smack Streetwear. And also, if y'all niggas need some game, if you need extended game, you hear me? If you need extended game, get at me in my DMs on Instagram. At Ball Smack Topsoil. Y'all know my Instagram. Or the podcast Instagram. The Ball Smack Podcast Either one of them motherfuckers, go through there. Let me know. We can set it up. You understand me? Cash App, uh, 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 PayPal. If you need advanced game, one-on-one game, we can work it out. Holla at a nigga. We can do it. I've been doing them lately. You feel me? 
And it's all right. I ain't had no weird motherfuckers. Everybody been 100 about they game. So I'm fucking with niggas. So if you need that, fuck with your boy, man. I'm telling you. And, um, yeah. Get at the ball, smack top soil. All right. Niggas in the motherfucking news. Niggas in the motherfucking news. Uh, Super Bowl 54, man. KC, Frisco. I had KC all day. I had KC all day. Patrick Mahomes. Gunslinging, young, and I love him, man. They represent the wave to me. They KC represent that wave, that youth wave. You understand me? I fuck with them, man. I fuck with that energy, man. I fuck with that don't quit energy. It was beautiful. I love the game itself. The game itself. Um, I want to throw in a clip too. I got a clip right here. It was Jay Z. Jay Z and his bitch Beyonce um, sat down for the anthem. Um, they didn't get up, and uh, I got a clip of that right here. Let's 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 review that right quick. I got a little clip of that, so let's check that out. Jay Z and um, Beyonce at the Super Bowl. Yeah, see, so Jay-Z sitting down at the Super Bowl for the anthem. Um, I don't know what that means since he did a deal with the NFL, you know what I'm saying, and seemingly uh, shitted on Colin. And then Colin Kaepernick, he came out and said some shit. You know what I'm saying? Once they saw Jay-Z sitting down, Colin came out and said some shit. And it's weird, man. The Super Bowl shit with Jay-Z was weird. It was a weird halftime. The ball smack topsoil was not fucking with that halftime show. J-Lo and motherfucking Shakira, man. Them bitches is old. I don't get that halftime. What we had was a, a, a old bitches Mexican have time so i'm trying to understand that um put together by jay-z i don't know if everybody I, to me the only highlight of that halftime was when bad bunny came out and seemed and seemed like he was gonna do that song that he got with cardi b I, and then i was like i know cardi b ain't gonna come out here i thought she was like i'm fucking with colin Kaepernick. i don't know man it was some weird shit the halftime was weak the halftime show was some bullshit. Jay-Z, the halftime show was some bullshit. It was weak as fuck. The game was good, though. The game was bomb. Salute to, uh, to, to both teams. But Patrick Mahomes is that wave. Niggas deserve to go to Disneyland. I love it. I love it. It was, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. Uh, all right. Our next nigga in the news is a bitch. Shout out to that bitch, uh, Megan the motherfucking Stallion. Megan the Stallion is out here clowning niggas left and right, going through niggas like she should. The, the the she the self proclaimed she's the she's the hot bitch coach she's leading bitches in the in the in the path of independence and fuck niggas and you know what I'm saying I I get it I get it I get it go bitch do it so here the bitch is in the strip club with Tory Lane with sucker lanes I mean with Tory lanes she in the strip club with Tory Lanez throwing money 
And then money bag sucker is over there. I mean money bag yo is over there. And he in the club with her. What's up with you? And he was in the he was in the club with her. And it was just, bro, I don't know, I don't get it, I don't understand it. But I feel him. Everybody gotta live, everybody gotta do them. I can't knock it. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't knock the vibe. It's all good. Shout out to Megan the Stallion. Getting the bodies. I I appreciate it, man. She demonstrating and showing for all of y'all out there watching. They all looking up to her right now. They all looking up to her. She more profound of an influence on them right now, I think, than, than Cardi right now. Because I think, you know, since since Cardi low-key doing it right, she have a family. She have a husband and a baby and doing and, and, and putting out that energy. Megan Thee Stallion is completely single. And, and demonstrating how to climb over the individuals uh, and, and, and putting it out there for the public. And 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 then capping it off with g Easy. Capping it off with g Easy. We gotta give it up to Megan the Stallion, bro. She making a she making a mockery of all these, of, of all of them. They all, all these, all is looking like suckers. All of them. But I, I gotta salute her for putting that energy out there. It, she's it's like it's like a wave. She's leading a wave. She's leading a wave. Shout out to that. All right. Um, let's. Uh, and, and doing it. And, 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 I ain't trying to really. I ain't trying to really just shit on motherfuckers happiness you know what i'm saying like if like with g easy he he look happy he, he look happy to be laid up with megan the stallion you know what i'm saying so i don't want to i don't want to seem like a hater he may achieve be achieving his greatest dream but still he looked like a sucker in that when you vision that he was in a he was in a sucker mode. It, it, Megan is victorious. Megan is victorious. Shout out to Megan the Stallion. You know what I'm saying? I just want to be clear. And shout out to Boyce Watkins, man. I was, I was watching some Boyce Watkins. Uh, I was watching some Boyce Watkins today, man. And he was talking about sucker shit he did in college. He was begging a bitch. The bitch had dumped him, and he was begging her, and she shitted on him. And I was thinking about that. I was like, look at Boyce. I, I, I appreciated Boyce for putting his suckerism out there, man. We, you know, no, no, no man is immune from doing sucker shit. We all, we all have done sucker shit at one point in time. It's if you learn from your sucker shit. You hear me? Shout out to Boyce Watkins for putting that out there, man. All right. <clears throat> 50 Cent, Dope Fiends, French Montana in, my, in Miami. 50 Cent, Dope Fiends, French Montana, reportedly in Miami. I don't, you know, I don't know. Um. I don't know why. I, I don't know if these niggas is. I, I thought. I, you know what? I thought they was WWE for a minute, man. But I guess they. Uh, I guess they got some real beef. I saw 
French Montana. He, he French Montana be looking weird to me these days, man. Every time he talk, he sound weird. Um, he sound weird. And 50 Cent, and when 50 Cent, shout out to 50 Cent, he just had his star in Hollywood, man. I want to make a, I want to make an observation about 50 Cent and his star in Hollywood. When I was watching him, he, you know, he had on a tight ass plaid suit. It looked like his head was swollen, man. I don't know if y'all tripped off of that. It looked like his head was swollen. Let me, let's look at a video of that right here. I know I got a clip. Let's pull up a clip. 50 Cent. Look at this nigga. Don't it look like... It look like his head is swollen. Like his head is like... Like, kind of like how... Uh, what's his name? Uh, Trick Daddy. How his head is swollen. I, I wonder what kind of illness that is. That where your head swell up. You know what I'm saying? It, it just look weird. But anyway. Shout out to 50. Shout out to 50 if he dope fiend, uh, especially if he dope fiend, uh, French Montana. All right. I saw, uh, I saw Lil Wayne on Drink, Drink Champs. Lil Wayne on Drink Champs. That was a very interesting, um, podcast show shout out to nori it was very dope nori and dj efn um lil wayne is a bizarre character man to the fullest lil wayne live in a from watching that drink champs interview i feel like lil wayne lives in his own bubble reality that's different from normal reality that normal people in. He live in a he live in a selective reality that's like and I and, and he and he's 100% on all the drugs still. So Wayne is in his own world. Wayne didn't even Wayne said he didn't know who 20 he thought 21 Savage was a group. This is some weird shit, man. It's Wayne. Wayne is in his own world, man. But it was very informative. It was cool watching him. Um, I listen. I heard. I checked out the funeral. The funeral was a lot doper than I thought it was gonna be. Yeah, Lil Wayne is. Lil Wayne is just, uh, you know. Uh, Wayne is dope. He in his own universe, though, like a motherfucker. Better than, he bet way better than Eminem, like a motherfucker. Let me tell you something, man. Eminem is, is, is wheat. It's just garbage to me, man. I heard a good point. Uh, Maul from, uh, Joe Budden said the nigga put too many words in the motherfucking bar. That, that's the great analysis. Too many fucking words per bar. That's, that's a problem. Niggas need to communicate. Niggas need to communicate better. That's why I like Nipsey so much, man. Nipsey just understood. He really broke that shit down. He was like, nigga, let me simplify this. Niggas need to understand everything. You feel me? I need you to understand these bars. I like I like a lot of Nipsey shit before he died. All right. Um, what was I going with this? Oh, um. Uh, yeah, Lil Wayne on Drink Champs was dope. Now, one thing about Lil Wayne, though, man, I don't, I don't know how niggas, I don't know how niggas, um, and I love Lil Wayne, but how do niggas get caught with dope and guns and, I mean, even though it was a gold gun, he got caught with a gold gun with bullets in it, how did... You get caught with dope and guns at the airport and you just, you know what I'm saying? Niggas just be getting, you know, niggas just be getting out of shit, man. I don't know, man. Shout out to Lil Wayne, though. Um, shout out to the Joker, too, man. Shout out to the Joker. 
the Joker. Um, what is it? Joaquin Phoenix in his speech at the BAFTAs in uh, London. Man, that's a gangster speech. Shout out to him for standing up for niggas. Shout out to uh, Joaquin Phoenix, the Joker, coming with the just disrespected. They crowd. It was just quiet in there. They was hot. They was not feeling that. They was not feeling that shit he was talking. But shout out to Joaquin Phoenix for standing up for black people at the BAFTAs in London, in the UK. It was dope. Shout out to Joaquin Phoenix. I know you're going to win the Oscar. Um... I wanted to, they needed to nominate Eddie Murphy though for Dolomite though. They needed to nominate Eddie Murphy for Dolomite, man. Dolomite was dope, man. They needed to do that. All right. Um, all right. Uh, Mace. Mace goes in on Diddy about public about Diddy did this speech. Saying that niggas, nigga, you know, niggas need to boycott the Grammys or whatever, the, whatever he was talking about. The Grammys need to wake up, whatever Diddy was talking about. Mace came out. Clown Diddy said, "Nigga, you get slaving all your artists. You cheated me back in the days when I was young. Sell me my publishing back for two million. Diddy was like, fuck you, nigga. Business is business. Hey, man. Back in the days, man, all them niggas sold they publishing. Because they was broke and Diddy had the keys to the fame. I think Biggie sold his publishing to Puffy for 15 racks. So at least Mace got at least 5,000 more than Biggie. You feel me? But shout out to Mace for... uh trying to check Diddy <clears throat> but shout out to Mace for calling in on the Gene Deal show I was watching Gene Deal Gene Deal is a puffy ex security that been talking a whole lot of shit about him lately and I always been checking out Gene Deal watching his last night of Biggie and all this old shit if y'all ain't checked him out but Damn. I'm checking out Gene Deal and um, Mace call in on Gene Deal, you know what I'm saying? And I I thought it was finna be a friendly conversation of both of them shitting on Diddy, you know what I'm saying? But Mace kind of went off on Gene Deal a little bit, kind of like just start checking Gene Deal. You feel me? I thought Gene Deal was tough. Mace checking Gene Deal. Telling them, you know what I'm saying? He was in, he was, he was putting out, he was, he was he, he, he questioning him on why he was taking a picture with the nigga that killed Biggie. He said Gene D he accused Gene Deal of taking a picture with the nigga that killed Biggie. But anyway, man, shout out to Mace. Um, you know, shout out to Mace. All right. Now this, now this right here, this piece right here, let's let's evaluate this. I got another clip. Uh, I believe his name is Javonta Davis, boxer Javonta Davis was in, um, in, in Miami this weekend, I guess, for the Super Bowl and, and his baby mama was at the event at this event too so let's look at this clip and uh yeah as we see here we got javonta davis um snatching up his baby mama and ushering her out it seemed like she was in there with a nigga did you see that nigga that got up and uh left See, it's a nigga that got up and left real slick right there. So she, I, I, she, I guess she was out of pocket at a public event with a nigga. That's a, that's a very, that's a very uh, 
dangerous situation right there, see, for, for Javonta because, see, this clip went viral. You feel me? Now, I'm quite sure law enforcement pressing and pressing him. I hope baby mama standing up for him and he ain't catch no case behind that. I ain't hear nothing about him going to jail yet or nothing. But that's, you got to be, you got to, man, when, see, you got to be careful, man, because see, a situation like that right there, I would go as far as to say that's a trap being set by the bitch because, see, she know your triggers. So she is openly disrespecting you like that, hoping that you get out of pocket and do something like whoop her ass and with you going to jail. You feel me? See, you got to be careful. Like, that's a, that's a, you got to use a lot of tact in them situations. Like, and I know it's difficult for me to speak on such things because I, I don't have a baby mama like that. So I, I, I haven't. You know, I, I, I wouldn't know what that energy felt like. But at the same time, man, risking, you can't, see, that makes you look aggressive and, like, you look like you whooped her ass once you got her outside, no matter what. And it make you look bad. You don't want to be snatching up no bitch in a public place, ushering a bitch out like that and all these cameras around, man. Come on now, man. We got to, you got to use more tact than that, so... When I see that, I'm knowing that the bitch did it on purpose to... She wanted that to happen. She wanted that result to happen. So, Javante Davis, you got to be careful out there, brother. You can't be just snatching up. You feel me? Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's weird, bro. Yeah. All right, um... We have, um, let me see. We have, um, some, uh, reader, listener emails. And, um, we have some observations. Now, oh, man, I forgot. Another nigga in the news, man. I, I, man, I wanted to tap into this too um uh once again rest in peace kobe bryant rest in peace kobe bryant um a nigga this past weekend you know i had to go down to uh go downtown la you know pick up some supplies boss smack street where you know um and um and man like like right there on broad so, it's 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 broadway south broadway and 14th street in downtown la man they got a dope kobe mural like a motherfucker um that shit just is dope him and his daughter when she was young um it's a few of them popping up around downtown LA, but that one is is bomb. I took a picture of that. That motherfucker went viral right quick, like a motherfucker. But anyway, uh, I was down there, and uh, you know, I was like, "Fuck it, man. Let me drive by the uh, let me drive by the uh, Staples Center." And it was really like fascinating driving by the Staples Center. Like it was it was really fascinating driving by the Staples Center, bro. Like cause Kobe, man, it's just like it's just like I thought it was a game. It was like damn near in the morning. It was like in the morning, like around around like nine o'clock in the morning, man on Saturday, bro, like, and it was like, it was a Laker game, like a playoff game or something happening, as many people that was, that was walking, but it was just like a, everybody was just like a somber, everybody was just like, 
it was like nah everybody all the laker colors you know t-shirts being sold everywhere but it was it it, it was like it's crazy man it's like a, a wake it's like staple center it's like a wake like it's a wake for kobe i don't even know i don't even know how they play games at the staples right now man because it's just like kobe it's just like an atmosphere of homage for kobe man so I just wanted to share that energy with everybody out there. Like, I just wanted niggas to feel that, like, that Kobe energy out there, man. It's, woo! Man, nigga been looking at some old Kobe uh, game clips, like the first time he, 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 he played against Jordan, then, like, the second time he played against Jordan, and then... The last time he played against Jordan when he was on the Wizards and Kobe, 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 and Kobe Clownty. Damn, and I saw that game, man. I remember I was mad as fuck, man. I was mad as fuck at Kobe. For, <laughs> I was mad at Kobe for clowning Mike. It was crazy, man. Then I, then they had the first, the first Kobe versus Shaq when, um, when, when Shaq had went to the Heat, the first Kobe versus Shaq, Shaq just had hella dunk. Man, it was crazy, man. It's crazy. Man. A couple of interesting things I want to say about Kobe, though. Like, <clears throat> that I don't know. Um, I don't know the circumstances. I don't know what's going on. But I don't think he was... Uh, on speaking terms with his people, with his with his moms and his pops and them, I don't think. And you know that's that's kind of dark right there, man. Niggas gotta, you know what I'm saying? Um, I just like the it's just the ball smack topsoil opinion, man. That you know, um, man, your parents, man, your moms and pops, man, they ain't never wrong, like. Even if they crazy, man, you just got to be like, all right, you crazy, but I love you. Check in on you, man. Even though, you know, you don't agree with everything I got going on, still check in on your peoples, man, because that's how you got here to the planet. If they ain't abusing you, like, physically and beat you and raped you and all of that, man, I don't know. It seemed like, man, you got to, you got to, you got to talk to them, man. You can't just be turning your back on your peoples, man. You know what I'm saying? I understand if you were sexually molested and beat up and, you know what I'm saying, had to escape for your life, man. But if, if, if that didn't happen to you, man, your parents, man, you know, always, man. But that's a sad thing not to have to been talking to your parents, man, and then something like that happened, man. You know what I'm saying? Other weird shit like... He never had none in, you know, none, no no Lakers had ever been to his crib, you know, all that weird shit like that, man. But recipes, Kobe, man, you feel me? Recipes, Kobe. Real shit, man. Um. All right, let me see. Uh, I have an observation, man. Um. And, you know, this is some, this is some, um, this is some light game right here, man. I was talking to some niggas, man. Um, you know what? Let me just go like this right here. Let me just go like this. I want to do some Bible game. I'm going to do some Bible game. Man. I'm going to come out the Bible on y'all, man, with some game, man. Because, see, this game right here, man, um, this game is like the, 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 the tenant, the, the, the principle of this game is excessive thirstiness and um, 
bad advice. Not being able to. Not being able to. Gauge your people's confiding. The danger of confiding in niggas that you don't know is your enemy. You understand me? So this is some game, man. I want niggas to vibe off of this. Now look. <clears throat> I'm a flowing glow. Let's see. I believe it's... Uh, I believe it's... Uh, Old Testament. Uh, Second Samuel. I think it's the story of... Uh, Story of uh, Amnon, Amnon sin against Tamar. Flowing glow. Let me, let me. I'm a flowing glow for y'all niggas. Fuck me. Oh shit. All right. Chapter thirteen. And it came to pass after this that Absalom, the son of David, had a fair sister whose name was Tamar. And Ammon, the son of David, loved her. And Ammon was so vexed that he fell sick for his sister Tamar, for she was a virgin. And Amam, Amnon thought it hard for him to do anything to her. But Amnon had a friend whose name was Jonadab, the son of Shema, David's brother. And Jonadab was a very subtle man. And he said unto him, Why art thou, being the king's son, lean from day to day? Wilt thou not tell me? And Amnon said unto him, I love Tamar, my brother Absalom's sister. And Jonadab said unto him, Lay down on thy bed, and make thyself sick. And when thy father cometh to see thee, say unto him, I pray thee, let my sister Tamar come and give me meat and dress the meat in my sight that I may see it and eat it at her hand. Then David sent home to Tamar saying go now to thy brother Amnon's house and dress him meat so Tamar went to her brother Amnon's house and he was laid down and she took flour and kneaded it and made cakes in his sight and did bake the cakes and she took a pan and poured them out before him but he refused to eat and Amnon said have out all the men from me and they went out every man from him and Amnon said unto Tamar bring the meat into the chamber that I may eat of thine hand and Tamar took the cakes which she had made and brought them into the chamber to Amnon her brother and when she had brought them unto him to eat he took hold of her and said unto her come lie with me my sister and she answered him nay my brother do not force me for no such thing ought to be done in Israel. Do not thou this folly. 
and I, whither shall I cause my shame to go? And as for thee, thou shalt be as one of the fools of Israel. Now, therefore, I pray thee, speak unto the king, for he will not withhold me from thee. Y'all see that right there, see? He can have her if he go about it the right way. Howbeit, he would not hearken unto her voice, but being stronger than she forced her and lay with her. Then Amnon hated her exceedingly, so that the hatred wherewith he hated her was greater than the love wherewith he he had loved her. And Amnon said unto her, Arise, be gone. And she said unto him, There is no cause. This evil in sending me away is greater than the other that thou didst unto me. But he would not hearken unto her. Then he called his servant that ministered unto him and said, Put now this woman out from me and bolt the door after her. And she had a garment of divers colors upon her. For with such robes were the king's daughters that were virgins apparelled. Then his servant brought her out and bolted the door after her and Tamar put ashes on her head and rent her garment of divers colors that was on her and laid her hand on her head and went on a crying. Thus is the story of excessive thirstiness and receiving bad advice from niggas who secretly hate you thinking you could confide in them and how many times was you overpowered by your thirstiness and when you busted that nut you was like get out to the bitch brazy huh Anyway, Absalom end up killing. That's the other, that's his brother's, Amnon's brother, end up killing him and then going to war with David. It's a whole big old thing in the, in the Old Testament. Y'all could check that out. But that's a story of suckerism, excessive thirstiness, unnecessary. You hear me? And I told that story to reinforce that if you need some good game, you don't want to be led astray. You're in a situation. You need some good game. Get at the ball smack top soil. You hear me? Get at the ball smack top soil. You feel me? Get at me. Info in the description. All right. Now, let's do a reader listener email. Now let me see. Let me pull this motherfucker up, man. Now this 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 reader listener email kind of got multiple parts to it a little bit, but um, you know we gonna we gonna we gonna make it do what it's supposed to do. Let me see where this motherfucker at. Man. Wild out here, man. Um, yep. Yeah. Okay. Real nigga rules and stoicism. I don't know where this nigga from. But this is my peoples. Let's see. Let me try to read this. I'm going to try to flow and glow. Um. He said, 
I heard you talk a lot about stoicism and you seem to believe in it. I want to know what it is, how important it is to the game and top books you recommend to develop that part of being a Mac nigga out here. Any updated rules for new decade real niggas should, that should abide by to reach great overall nigga status. <laughs> also, um, a question I have is how, how do you exercise dick rationing without blowing a bitch or a bitch putting you in a sucker or boyfriend category? Okay, let me try to figure that out. All right. So, the first part, um, st stoicism. All right. My first encounter with stoicism was by accident while just, I'm the type of nigga just go to the bookstore or go to the library and just go to the philosophy section and just see what's there and look at titles. You know what I'm saying? And I've, you know, I went through a lot of all of the Plato, you know, um, Plato, the Republic, the Apology. Um, what's the other one? The Apology. Uh, Republic. Think Mino, um, all the all the all the all the all the Plato stuff, um, Gorgias, uh, the Symposium, all of that. All of that stuff is is just dope. You know what I'm saying? And um, you know. So when you're in that section, you be looking at all this stuff, and then you start seeing other names. So then I end up seeing Marcus Aurelius, and I seen Marcus Aurelius, the meditations. And I said, oh, man, that's just a dope ass name for a book. And this is before uh, Gladiator came out. Gladiator wasn't out yet. And Marcus Aurelius. And I read that and I was like, oh, man, this is dope. I didn't even know that was stoicism. I just was reading what he what he had. <clears throat> and then that turned out to be stoicism and then <clears throat> Seneca is another dude um, the letters letters from Seneca uh, I showed that book on the show it's around here somewhere but anyway um, those are good books on stoicism stoicism is nothing but um, just pure discipline memento mori one day you will be dead Remember, one day you will be dead. That's Latin. Memento mori. One day you will be dead. So in your highest happiness, when you feeling your most happy, when you feeling the most adulation, you know what I'm saying? That's what Roman, that's what Roman generals used to be whispering. Like when Roman generals came back, from a tremendous campaign where they won some shit. They had just was super victorious. Honors being bestowed. They doing the parade through the city. Motherfuckers whisper in their ear, Memento Mori. Remember, one day you will be dead. You know what I'm saying? So stoicism just keep us grounded, man. Um, one of the tenets of stoicism that, that was in Seneca was like, one of his best advices was to avoid large crowds. Avoid large crowds because large crowds have like a uh, um, a mental atmosphere that's highly contagious. That even the most intelligent person can get caught up in the energy of large crowds. So you know, stoicism is dope. Now, when you apply that to the game, I mean, 
Stoicism is all about discipline, like, you know, restraint in everywhere, you know what I'm saying? Restraint everywhere. You know what I'm saying? And um, I believe that, uh, you know, restraint is everything. Now, um, <clears throat> you say, how can you exercise dick ranching in <clears throat> without blowing a bitch? Damn. Okay. Now, if you... Now, here's real shit right here, man. Like... There, you know... Really? Like... If you... If you, like... Are not... You, 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 like, let's say... You doing, you stand on top of game, right? You stand on top of game. You stand, you stand looking good, smelling good. You, you, you know, you stand on top of your resources coming in. You, you, you know what I'm saying? Thirstiness is looked down upon by bitches, bro. Like, re regardless to what you think. Like, when you restrain yourself, you know what I'm saying? But you still maintaining maximum sex appeal you feel me? you're still maintaining your 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 pinnacle status but you Damn. is in restraint you're not doing no thirsty activities you're not pressing you know what i'm saying but you still being that nigga though you feel me like no matter what you're gonna create the the, the sexual tension if you're doing it right and especially if you're not and, and wasting no semen masturbation you're not doing none of that you you if you if you retaining your essence you feel me and you stand on top of game you feel me the sexual tension is is palpable bro like you know what i'm saying and 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 you could dwell in that zone long frustration is your friend you know frustrating bitches is your friend to to frustrate a bitch to be that nigga to be in her presence and to show restraint you can let you will ne I, 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 I have yet to see niggas blow bitches because they exercise restraint I have yet to see that I have yet to see that I have yet to see that See, what you need to do is go there. You need to go to that place. You ain't never been there. I don't think you ever been there. I don't think you ever been to the place of not pressing bitches for pussy like that. You got to go to that place. You got to really be like, I ain't pressing her for no pussy. Until she really be like, yo, what's up? And you're like, ain't nothing up. I just, you know, I feel like it still bomb you still beautiful you know you still compassionate romantic and all that you just don't <clears throat> i'm gonna tell you man there is a direct relation to there's a direct relation to cult from from from, from to to be ice cold you understand me to maintain restraint you feel me your ability to do that and hold firm is is it, there is a direct relation with how the bitch treats you like you will be treated better you will notice better treatment according to how you do that the more kissing ass weenie um feminine shit you do the less um, control you, you, you'll be able to, you, it should be more chaotic. The more stoic, you might as well use ice cold. Like when you say stoicism, you might as well say ice, uh, your ice coldness. You feel me? You gotta be, that's what niggas, that's the essence of everything is the ice cold restraint on the emotions you know what i'm saying like um 
you just you gotta say. everybody always use these terms like masculine frame and all of this type of stuff man you just gotta stay in the zone of uh, you that nigga you gotta stay there man you gotta stay in the zone of i'm that nigga and i'm not moved by like uh, you know yeah pussy is great it's beautiful this is how we bring kids kids here is but we don't dwell on that we don't dwell in the zone of just perpetual pleasure bro you gotta stay in a zone of productivity and creativity and in um, abundance you know what i'm saying of 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 building of the growth of the empire you understand me like see that's what excessive see it's a middle path the middle way like there's a middle way between pain and pleasure you feel me you don't want to cause yourself excessive pain but you don't want to dwell in excessive pleasure they are bad both are bad like excessive ple- the true philosopher is tested by pleasure and pain both of them can take you out you feel me and pleasure is more dangerous than pain so you know that's that's how I look at it it's like a It's like you, we, we, we can't just, you, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta stand firm. You know what I'm saying? That's the essence of the game. You, you, you wonder how can you hold a bitch with dick ration? I pursue that I have never seen niggas hold a bitch with just fucking. You feel me? So, <clears throat> feel me right there in that zone. Uh, Alright. Uh, I had another observation, man. Um, well, I, well, actually, I had a, I had a question. Nigga hit me up. He said, "Ball smack." Let me see. He said, "Ball smack." Um, I just found out. <clears throat> that one of my females have herpes and you know how do you deal with that well you know what I'm saying I feel like um, you know a lot of people out here have that and um, you lucky she told you you feel me and um you should be thankful that she told you because a lot of these motherfuckers they ain't gonna even tell you they're gonna just let you you know what i'm saying do your thing and and then when they have an outbreak they'll hide from you you feel me a lot of i think it's a lot of celebrities out here that got it I, i'm quite i think i heard something about nba young boy and his girl and chris brown and some other people so this is alleged you know what i'm saying so it's more prevalent than you think. I think a lot of people is out here. That's why, man. Listen, man. Um, niggas need to be exercising a lot. You got to be careful out here, man. You got to be careful out here, bro. You got to be exercising restraint, man. The thirstiness, man, is, is just at an all-time high. And I hate to sound like I sound like a, a old dude, and I am old, but still, I'm just saying. Man. But anyway, um, I think that's it. Um,
Yeah. We're going to hold up right here, man. We're going to hold up right here. Um, I hope y'all could use some of that that we laid out today. Um, ball smack, topsoil, extra relevant. God bless y'all niggas. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming out. The Top Mac Nigga Show is a Ball Smack Industries production. Put your hands together for our special musical guest. I ain't gonna even say no names. Steady while I'm riding fully loaded with the clip Trying to keep it stashed, trying to make sure that I get the bag Trying to help my brothers get and survive up through this path That we have been destined, guarantee we show you this is greatness Good type of feel, got you feeling all the base shit Hustle off the way quick Forever promise I'ma ride For my brothers I'm about to slide I'ma hold it down, riding, riding Wanna have my family live a better life and I won't back down, I won't fret I'ma do whatever the fuck I need Gotta have my family make sure they eat Gotta have my family make sure they eat I'ma do what I gotta do Do what I gotta do I'ma do what I gotta do I'ma do what I gotta do To the pen and the page Erica Badu playing another side of the game I let the Frank and Murr burn With a sprinkle of sage The lights about joint pain Like Frankie Beverly and Maze It's for my niggas in the cage Upstate in the rage and for the dead homie slain Six feet in the grave It's dedication, meditation That be keeping me sane My preparation's revelation Living in these last days My granny told me it's gonna be tough But you gon' make it Born gifted like Wale You a special sister, baby Know the devil is a lie You tell the truth and you gon' shame him Paint a portrait with my words, Vicasso, the illustrator, innovator, contemplating them cables, pursuing paper, young nailer, nigga, born to ride like a crusader, though that Nipsey hustle won't his own for motivation, they gon' give me my respect or I'm gon' take it, I'm gon' take it. Forever promise I'ma ride, for my brothers I'm about to slide, I'ma hold it down, ride and ride it. Wanna have my family live a better life and I won't back down, I won't freeze I'ma do whatever the fuck I need Gotta have my family make sure they eat Gotta have my family make sure they eat I'ma do what I gotta do Do what I gotta do I'ma do what I gotta do I'ma do what I gotta do, I'ma do, what I gotta do. 